So welcome back YouTubers, all my subscribers and future to be subscribers. Um, <clears throat> I want to bless you with a word today that the Lord has given me and I'm sure that it's going to bless you guys. So make sure that you guys share it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you can support my growing channel. And so I want to go ahead and start. Um, so the title of this video is going to be called, We Keep On Walking Even When The Lo World Looks Dry. So, we're going to go to Deuteronomy 2, I mean 8, 2 through 7. And it says, Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would obey his commands. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna a food previously known, unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone, rather will live by every word that comes from the word of mouth, from the mouth of the Lord. So I'm gonna read that again, and it says, yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then filling you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone, rather we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And by that we can understand that um, every day that goes by, we don't only live by, by food, by nourishment, you know, by sunlight, vitamin D, whatever minerals you think you're eating and, you know, helping your body. We don't live by that. We live by the word of God. And that's why we are alive today. That's why we are breathing today. So... For all these 40 years, your clothes didn't wear out, and your feet didn't blister or swell. Think about it. Just as a parent disciplines a child, the Lord your God disciplines you for your own good. So obey the commands of the Lord your God by walking in His ways and fearing Him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into good land of flowing streams and pools of water, with fountains and springs that gush out in the valleys and hills. And we're going to stop there, um, and I'm going to read that one more time, and it says, Deuteronomy 8 and 7, For the Lord your God is bringing you into good land of flowing streams and pools of water, with fountains and spring that gush out in the valleys and hills. So, um, if you guys have any idea of what that would mean to you of you know, what does it mean to you that God says you're going to be in a place with flowing streams, flowing rivers of water? What does that mean to you? When you think about that, what comes to your mind? I would love for you guys to comment on my video so that I can see where your perspective is, so that I can see deeper into you. And, you know, so that the Lord can see that you're trying to reach more into yourself. So, you know, because the only way to live safe, the only way to live for God we have to find out about our own self. We have to admit our wrong. We have to admit our sinful nature. So I'm going to go ahead and read on some notes that I have wrote down. And it says, we must keep on walking even when it seems there is no way. So just like the children of Israel, you know, they were, they went to the wilderness after they left Egypt for being slaves. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. And that's a very long time. And they never... You know, they were never hungry. Their feet never swole, just like the scripture said. God was always taking care of them, no matter what. Even in the wilderness, even when it was dry, even when there was no hope. God knew that he, he took care of them. You know, God is a mighty God. God is not a small God. God is not going to tell you something, and then he's not going to do it. So, like the children of Israel. So... It is a good land, a good land where you know that you have no worries. See, God is trying to bring you into this place, but you have to learn how to trust Him. You have to learn how to totally depend on Him without depending on nobody else, without giving up, because you can't have faith for three days and then stop having faith. You can't have faith for one hour and then stop the faith. God doesn't work like that. You have to keep a constant faith because it's a battle. And see, the only way to stay motivated in God is by hearing the word of God every day 
every week every not just every sunday but monday through friday monday through sunday every day at least one verse a day is going to help you even in the morning or before nighttime it doesn't matter so this land i want you guys to understand that from these scriptures it is a good land a good land with no stress because it's been people stressing out it's been people really suffering on stress so a good land of no anxiety a good land of no sadness no bitterness and no worry because these things can make you sick these things can actually take you down they can take you out and that's what the enemy's plan is is to take you out see it is a place of constant trust like a farmer who never runs out of produce and animals it is that kind of trust that you know that if in the supermarket there's no more eggs you know that you can go to your backyard and just grab some eggs because you have plenty of chicken you know you can grab some pigs you know you can grab some cows and make some milk make some cheese you know why because you know that you have plenty you know that it's going to keep on going they're going to reproduce and that's what the Word of God the Word of God is going to reproduce in you it's going to keep it's going to keep birthing new things in you that you never knew you had see because when we when we find out who God is when we find out when we accept things into our life hallelujah he starts taking things out that don't belong in us he starts putting in new things that we we now are discovering we now are you know getting to know God but we're it's an uncomfortable place but we have to know that we can trust him so a good land is a good place in life where you no longer have to please others but God himself because God wants us to trust him fully not nothing else because nothing else does not matter so it is a good land with constant good soil and you see God is a, a seed planter and everywhere there is good soil it will flourish everywhere there is good soil it will flourish because you know that you have that seed inside of you you know you have that seed of God that seed of God that is going to grow and it's going to keep growing because when it comes to God nothing is impossible his possibilities are impossible and it's never going to stop but he's just going to keep growing because if you think about it for every generation ever since the beginning of time since the world was created the Word of God was here and it's always going to be here even if we're not here it's still going to be here your grandchildren your great-grandchildren are gonna see the Word of God the Word of God right sitting next to you it's never going to change it's better for the world to disappear than the Word of God to change so remember that so it is a stable ground a ground of truthfulness truthfulness and faithfulness a land full of everything you will ever need full of honey full of the Word of God a good land where every time you have to be recharged the Lord will be there he will pour out his spirit and fill you in your dry place and I'm gonna read that one more time and it says he will pour out his spirit and fill you in your dry place so in this dry place in this dry land we know that even though it may be a desert even though and and when I'm talking about this yeah I'm talking about a specific place but I want you to think about it as your spiritual place I want you to think about it in your mind use your mind because your mind is much more powerful than what you actually know it's much more powerful than what you actually can see remember that a, a dry place you know how when you feel so drained in your spirit and you just need that that encouragement you need you need that prayer to uplift your spirit hallelujah so in the place where you seem miserable and not understood because not everybody can understand that not everybody can understand but God can because he already knows how you feel the place of trust which means a firm belief in the integrity the ability and the character of a person so I want you guys to understand this it is the place of trust which means a firm belief in the integrity so you're believing in God's integrity. When you trust Him, when you decide to trust Him, you're believing in His integrity. You're believing in His ability and in His character as a person because He is a loving, kindness heart. He is a loving, a loving, kind person. He's not a person, but He is a God. He is the Almighty. He is bigger than us. He is bigger than what we can actually understand. So in order to trust God, you must know and recognize His character. 
He is not a God of destruction, hate, or a bitter God. And that's one thing that I don't understand sometimes about people that don't believe in God and they say they know the word of God, but they, they believe that the word of God, that God himself is a destructor. He, he likes to destroy things or, you know, he's just a bitterness God, but he's not. He, he's a God full of love and he loves you. And no matter, no matter who you are, he loves you. He loves you so much. And he came, he told me to tell you today that he loves you. And don't forget to keep trusting him. He is not a God of destruction. Hallelujah. So he is a God full of love and patience. Waiting for the day we return to him. So see, he is a God. A God that we can trust. A God that knows that we have flaws. And we're not perfect. See, we have flaws because we are human. We're human and we're not God. And he understands that because he sent his only son to earth to die for our sins. So Jesus knows how we feel. Jesus knows what we have to go through. And remember, don't make decisions on your emotions, on your, on your emotions, because we can feel one, one way today and then tomorrow we're going to feel another way. So don't make permanent decisions on those emotions. So always remember that. He is a God that wants to be trusted. We must follow him through obedience of the spirit. He is a God that wants to be trusted. He is a God that he just wants you to come to him as a child. He wants you to give him all. He wants you to just put your hands up, get on your knees. No matter where you are in your house, in your living room, in your kitchen, in your room, in the bathroom. It don't matter where you are outside. Because it doesn't even matter what people think. It's about you and God and his relationship with him because he is always watching us. Hallelujah. And all he wants to do is for you to trust him. All he wants is your trust. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to believe in him. How else can he work in you? How else can he show you things? How else can he give you dreams? If you have such a small mind, if you have such a closed mind. Let me tell you guys something. The devil knows when the final battle is going to come. He knows that he's going to be destroyed. He knows that he's going to be destroyed. Hallelujah. And he's trying to take as many people down as he can with him. And we're not going to let him. But, you know, we have to we have to spread the word of God. We have to let people know because a lot of people don't know this. You know, and the reason why the devil is trying to take them is because he knows he's going to get destroyed. He already knows. He knows he's going down and he's never coming back. Because God will reign in this earth. He's going to make it new like his bride. He's going to make it a new world. A new peaceful world with no sorrow, no sorrow, no hurt, and no pain. So when we trust the Lord, we come into a peaceful place. We know that we are set free by him and him only. Because see, when we're not free by Jesus Christ, we're actually dealing with these spirits we're dealing with different spirits that control your anger they control your emotions they can control your decisions they control how you love people and how you use people they can they can cause an addiction in you see all these spirits they actually control you that's why you have to be very aware of the word of god you have to be aware of these spirits that's why you must live in the word of god you must make it flesh because when you read the word of god when you believe it when you trust it it becomes flesh, literally flesh. And this is this is not a joke. This is real truth. See, it is a place, a place of trust. A place that when you look at the sky, you know that he's there. And this is one thing that I want you guys to try. Not to try, but I do want you guys to do it. When you guys have some time at nighttime, just go outside. Go outside or, or the sunset. Go outside and enjoy the sky. Enjoy, enjoy the scenery. And if you see the stars, look at them and thank God and just talk to him. Because he's there. He's already watching you. He already knows your heart. He knows that you're seeking after him. He knows that you want to see him. He knows. He knows that you want to know your calling. He knows that you want to know your purpose. 
but just talk to him. Give him some time. Give him some time, and I promise you, he's going to reveal it to you. He's going to talk to you. Hallelujah. If it's through a word, if it's through somebody, if it's through a dream, through a vision, he is going to be there. Remember, he is the creator, and nothing is impossible through him. So I will leave you guys with this right now. Imagine walking on a dry, dry road. It is very dark outside. And this is what the whole message is about, basically, because we were talking about how God has been there for the Israelites, for the people of God, the people of Israel, hallelujah. How God was there for them through those 40 years, even though they complained, even though they were ungrateful sometimes, even though that they, they talked in people's, in each other's ears, you know, talking about Moses, talking about Jesus, talking about God, you know, saying that he won't do this, he won't do that, he, he got us here to starve us. Even though they did that to him, he still took care of them. He still brought them to the promised land. He still fed them bread from heaven. Bread that nobody has ate before, but they were the first ones. But you know why? Because God is a God of possibilities. He's a huge God. He's, he's bigger than the sky. He's bigger than earth. He's bigger than, than the universe. He's outside the universe because he can see us. He can see us as plain as clear. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So this, this, was, this message was about trust. It was about knowing who he is and not giving up. You know, um, I want you, so I want you guys to remember um, this right here. So imagine walking on a dry, dry road. It is dark outside. There is a light at the end of the road. So imagine you're walking in a very dry ground and all on the sides, you know, um, it's very dry. It's just very dry. And when you keep on walking and it's just like a desert, so it's a dirt road. You know, you're seeing this. I want you to imagine this in your mind. So it's just a dirt road and you keep walking, but you feel like you want to give up. You feel like you want to turn left, like you want to turn right. So even when you want to step, even when you want to step aside, when you want to go left or you want to go right, I want you guys to keep on going. I want you guys to take every step that you can and keep on walking because God is seeing you. God is watching you. And you see every step that you take, you're going to see a light at the, at the end of the tunnel, at the end of the road, and it's going to keep getting brighter and brighter and brighter. All you have to do is keep on going. And I want you guys to, to imagine this in your mind. And so as you keep on walking, as every step that you take, there's palm trees on both sides just coming up, just coming up. There's just palm trees and plants and all kind of stuff, hallelujah, all kind of nourishment. And so as you keep on walking, you're gonna see palm trees and they're just gonna start coming up. They're just gonna start coming up, just like God created the earth again, hallelujah. But he's guiding your path. He's guiding your destination, hallelujah. Growing out of the ground on both sides of the road. Thank you, Jesus. So that is God watching over you. He is watching over every step of your life, over every step that you take towards your future. He is watching you. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep on going because God is with you and God sees you. Keep on going and keep on walking.